Hello, and welcome to our fourth lesson of the first chapter. Uh, we're going to talk about displaying quantitative data with numbers. Uh, there are a lot of small things we need to cover, uh, so here they are. We're going to talk about mean, median. We're going to compare mean and median. Uh, then we're going to talk about uh, box plots and interquartile range, or IQR. Uh, as promised, we'll talk about how to identify outliers. Uh, then we'll use that information to uh, find a five number summary with the box plots. Uh, then we're going to move on to talk about standard deviation and mean. We're going to compare standard deviation and mean as a way to represent data versus um, IQR and uh, the median. Uh, we'll talk about uh, technology real quickly because you're going to need your calculators, uh, which we'll introduce in uh, another video. And then we'll talk about choosing measures of center and spread. So again, comparing uh, the median and the IQR versus mean and standard deviation and when it's appropriate to use one or the other. All right, <clears throat> so this should be a review for you. Uh, so mean is going to be the average value of a set of observations. Uh, it's represented mathematically as this X bar symbol. And so <clears throat> we're going to take the sum of the observations, uh, x sub 1 plus x sub 2, uh, yada yada, through x sub n, we're adding the sum of those values and then dividing by the count. So for example, if I ask you to find the mean age of student population where the population had five people, ages 15, 16, 16, 16, and 17, uh, then I would add uh, each of those values together as a sum and then divide by the count of the observations, and that would bring me to my mean, which in this case is 16. Uh, all right, uh, so now let's incorporate that into a, a stem and leaf plot. So I have a stem and leaf plot, and now I want you to take a moment. This is not going to be classwork uh, per se that I want you to turn in, but I want you to work along with me. And you're going to find the average or mean travel time with uh, and without the outlier. Uh, so we're going to say that 6, 0 is an outlier <clears throat> for now. Uh, calculate the mean value uh, both with and without the outlier. So you can pause here, and then we're going to come back. Okay, so if I calculate the mean with the outlier, you can see that my mean value is uh, 22 and a half minutes, whereas uh, without the outlier, hopefully I said that correctly, without the outlier, it's 19.8 minutes. So that uh, apostrophe mark means minutes, and then a quotation mark with two would mean seconds. So that's that abbreviation. So you can see how that outlier is going to affect uh, the mean value, but wouldn't affect the median value. So outliers or skew are going to affect the uh, mean value uh, more so than the uh, median value. So please keep that in mind as we evaluate uh, when to use, again, mean and standard deviation or median and interquartile range. All right, so uh, let's talk about uh, median and comparing mean and median. All right, so median, we talked about the mean. Median is the midpoint of a distribution. The number is such that half of the observations are smaller and half are larger. And so the way you want to find the median is to arrange all the observations in order of size from small to large. And many times you're going to be given a, a bunch of data. And uh, that data uh, is not going to be presented to you in order. So you have to order it first from smallest to largest. Uh, if the number of observations is odd, uh, then the median is the center observation in the ordered list. So for example, if I have an odd number, let's say 7, then number 4 in order from smallest to largest is going to be your median observation. Now, if the number of observations is even, then the median uh, is going to be the average of the two center observations. So for example, if you have eight observations, then you're going to take observation four and five, add those together, divide by two. So you're going to take the mean of the median, <laughs> uh, or at least the mean to find the median in that case when your values the count of the observations is even. Um, all right, so let's take an example. So I have, uh, and you're going to work along with me, and then I will give you a classwork problem to do. 
That will be our first classic problem. We want you to find the median when n is odd, and then find the median when n is even. So please take a moment, please pause, uh, find these two values. Okay, so the median value when n is odd is 5, and then, so it's the third out of the fifth, the center value, and you can see that these numbers are in order, numerically, from lowest to highest. And then we're going to find the median when n is even. So we're going to take the center two, since I have six observations or data points. I'm going to take the two in the center, five and seven, as they're ordered. I'm going to add those together. That's 12 divided by two is equal to six. So six is going to be the median uh, for the second data set. Okay, so this brings us to your first classwork problem. And this you're going to turn into me, again, as I specify. Uh, please show your work and label. All right, so I want you to find the median when n is odd and the median when n is even. I'm going to move on, but I need for you to pause to write these down. Okay, so now we're going to talk about interquartile range and identifying outliers. Uh, so this is really good information. Again, information uh, you'll need for the AP exam. Uh, and also as a comparison to standard deviation. All right, so let's talk uh, at a higher level about interquartile range, which we'll call IQR from here on out. Uh, so the IQR measures the relative spread of the middle 50% of the data. Uh, so the first thing we want to do, again, is arrange the observation in increasing order and then locate the median. That's going to be the point for our second quartile, meaning half of the data values are lower and half are higher. Uh, and then the first quartile uh, is the median of the observations to the left of the real median. And the third quartile is the median of the observations to the right of the real median. Uh, and then the interquartile range, the IQR, is going to be the difference uh, in the number of uh, values between Q3 and Q1. All right, so let's take an example so you can understand this better. All right, so we can have two uh, possible outcomes. One is when the data set is odd, and then one is when the data set is even. So we're going to take the case where the data set is odd, and when that is the case, the median is that data point that's going to be left out of uh, both of the first uh, section between Q1 and Q2, and then between Q2 and Q3 uh, will not include that median value. <clears throat> uh, so the median is not included uh, in the analysis of the finding for the first quartile and the third quartile. And it would be represented as a box plot as a line that goes to the box plot. And I will show that to you in just a second. Um, all right, so in this case, the IQR is going to be 30. This 30, I have <clears throat> an even number of observations. I'm going to eliminate uh, one of them, the center of the true median. Then I'm going to take these seven observations, find the median to the left. That's 10, the fourth value. And the same on the right for the third quartile, 30 is the fourth value in this set. Uh, and then the difference between the two is the range, the interquartile range. And that difference is going to be 30 minus 10 or 20. Um, you're not doing it for the count. You're doing it for that value, uh, the median value, the spread for the median value. Uh, all right. So interquartile range in that case was 20. And so let's move on to an example where the data set is even. In this case, the median value is right between uh, two values. So we can split uh, the two sets of values into two halves um, and not exclude any values. Uh, and so in this case, uh, because we end up with an even, another even set uh, of counts, then we're going to take the middle two values and average those. Same here, middle two values and average those. And then those become our uh, uh, first and third quartile, which we're going to use to find the interquartile range. In this case, it's 42.5 minus 15, or 27 and 1 half. Uh, all right. Okay, so now let's talk about outliers. It's a lot of information. So an outlier is going to be any value that is one and a half times the IQR 
either above the third quartile or below the first quartile. So there's a little bit of math that we need to use now uh, with this graphical approach. And so my question to you is, is 5 an outlier and or is 60 an outlier? So given my definition here, I want you to take a moment uh, to pause the video, do the calculations, and you should have an answer uh, when you come back, when you restart the video. Okay, so I've done my calculations. One and a half times IQR is one and a half times 20. One and a half times 20 is 30. So I'm going to add 30 to uh, the third quartile. That's 60, uh, if I got that right. <clears throat> uh, 30 plus 30 is 60. I had to correct uh, my own error here. <clears throat> and so 60, this outlier, potential outlier value is not greater than 60 in this case. Uh, so 60 is not an outlier. Uh, and then if I subtract 30 from 10, I end up with negative 20. And 5 is greater than negative 20, not less than negative 20. So both 5 and 60 are not uh, viable outliers for this data set. Um, all right, so now let's talk about the five number summary and box plots. <clears throat> uh, five number summary includes the minimum, first quartile, uh, the median, the third quartile, and the maximum. Okay, and then I just added this for clarification. So five number summary, minimum, first quartile, uh, median, third quartile, maximum, and uh, outliers are not considered or cannot be considered uh, for the minimum or the maximum. All right, so <clears throat> let's take a look at how to get that five uh, number summary. And let's take an example. All right, so we're going to create a box plot. And in the box plot, we're going to list the observations in order from lowest to highest. So you can see I have a set of uh, observations that are not in order from lowest to highest. So I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> I'm going to reorder that list in order from 16 to 73. I'm going to locate the median. Uh, and then I'm going to locate the first quartile, 25 and a half, the third quartile, uh, 45. Then I'm going to determine if uh, 73 and 16 are outliers or not. And if they are not, then I'm going to include them. Uh, and I believe in this case they're not. I'm going to include them as part of my five number summary. Um, all right, so next to create that box plot using this information, Right, so I have my list of data. I'm going to create a number line. <clears throat> Here's my number line with at least the lowest and highest values. And then I'm going to draw a box from here, this rectangular box from Q1 to Q3. I'm going to draw a line in the box at the median, so that's at 34. Then I'm going to draw a line to the last data value that is not an outlier. <clears throat> um, and then... <clears throat> And I'm going to draw those from the center edges of the box. And if the minimum or maximum values are outliers, then draw an asterisk for those individual values and then do not include them in the five number summary. Uh, so you will include outliers as points or asterisks in your box plot, but not in your five number summary. And this is a list from your book of the number of home runs hit in a season by Barry Bonds by seasons, a maximum of 73 home runs hit. Uh, all right, so this brings us to classwork 1.3.2. Uh, here is a set of data. This measures uh, 14 of McDonald's sandwiches and how many grams of fat there are listed now in order. I want you to create a five number summary, draw a box plot, and determine if there are any outliers using uh, the IQR times one and a half uh, plus the third quartile and minus the first quartile. Oop, I'm showing you the answers. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go back to this. Sorry about that. You can uh, pause here, and uh, then I'm going to move on. Uh, all right, so let's talk about measuring spread and standard deviation, and uh, we're going to take this up in the next uh, video on displaying quantitative data with numbers.